All right, dueling events right now. Uh, Ted Cruz in Wyoming, although what you're, oh, there you go. Well, what you're seeing is Donald Trump, who's actually arrived there in Syracuse, New York. And uh, to the right there, Casper, Wyoming. That's someone who's introducing Ted Cruz, his eventual arrival there. So uh, Donald Trump there trying to appeal to voters in New York ahead of the primary. Just now three days away, and the, the polling shows Donald Trump way out in front of the Empire State with uh, a favorable uh, lead of 54 percent, with Ted Cruz a distant 16 percent. But it's Ted Cruz who is hoping to do well in Wyoming because he's the only one of the GOP field to arrive in that Wyoming convention today uh, with many uh, delegates at stake. All right, so let's talk about these um, very two um, very different uh, candidates who are at odds. Uh, they both believe the economy is in big trouble. And this week, Cruz firing a warning shot about the Fed and that a market crash could be coming. The Fed has, for those with assets, has driven up stock prices, driven up assets values. But, but that's not built on anything real. It's not built on, on, a, on an increase in the intrinsic value of those assets. It's just based on playing games with money. All right, well, Donald Trump has been echoing a very similar sentiment, uh, telling the Washington Post, quote, I think we're sitting on an economic bubble, a financial bubble, and the country is headed for a massive recession. Remember that when you talked to the editorial board and the Washington Post a couple weeks ago? All right, well, joining me right now to talk more about all of this, Larry Sabato, the director uh, for the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia, and Jason Johnson, professor of political science at Hiram College. All right, good to see both of you. Always glad to be here. Oh, Okay, so this whole view of pessimism, that is not what people are looking to hear from a presidential candidate. So, Jason, you're here in the room with me first. Why does Ted Cruz and Donald Trump feel this is beneficial uh, to scare them straight, so to speak? Well, no, it's not about scaring people, people straight for it. It's about if I am running against the incumbent party, I have to talk down the economy. Everybody does it because if you say the economy is great, then that helps Barack Obama, that helps Hillary Clinton, and it helps Bernie Sanders. So this is actually very But how typical. do they know these things? Because you hear from a lot of economists who say, you know, there are no indicators as of now to support what it is Ted Cruz and Donald Trump oh, are no, saying. No, they don't have to know anything, right? It's not okay. about being correct. It's about setting a narrative. All you have to do is say, look, if you don't vote for me, if we don't change what we're doing right now, we're going to be in trouble. George Bush did the same thing in 2000. Uh, Bill Clinton, you know, it's the economy stupid in 1992. As long as there's some semblance of economic anxiety out there, if you're the challenger, you're going to say the economy is going to heck in a handbasket. They're doing exactly what any candidate should do. All right, Larry, so this is beneficial potentially to a Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, you agree? It's beneficial uh, within the Republican context. Uh, Jason is absolutely correct. Uh, if you are running against the incumbent White House party, you must convince at least your partisans that the sky is falling. Uh, and if they believe the sky is falling, then they're more inclined to get excited and to get out there and vote for you uh, both during the primaries and in November if you're the nominee. All right, Larry Sabato, Jason Johnson, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and you see Donald Trump speaking there in Syracuse. We're going to find out in a moment when we come back whether he is saying the sky is falling or <laughs> whether there's something better in the forecast with him in the White House. We'll